Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris in our Roma Galactica series. What do we have here? Non-aggression pact invitation. Queptilium State has entered into a non-aggression pact with the Hofir Tranquil Polity. Meanwhile, we're still building our cruisers up on Earth and then a colony ship afterward. And unfortunately, we, we queued up this colony ship, but it's going to be a while before it's actually... Um, before we have a colony there, which is good because we need the extra leader in a couple of months. We're about to get three new technologies. Nice. All right. Some sort of radiation in controlled burst. Check it out, please. So we need this leader to start a new sector up here, which I really want to do. I haven't decided what to name it yet, but we'll find out soon enough. Okay. Sector limit plus one. Hydroponics farm. We've been sitting on this tech for a while, and I kind of feel like it's time to do that. Have better farms. We've also been sitting on this tech for a while, so let's do that. That's only five months away. Just for the sake of having better tech progress against the other empires. Um, Stormfire cannons. We haven't really installed these on our ships yet, but we're starting to get more advanced with some of these. Flak batteries. Again, I'm looking at techs I've been sitting on for a while. Military station health plus 10%. We don't have stations yet. But yeah, let's go for flak batteries. Why not? It's only 11 months away. Neutron torpedoes are five months away. And that's going to increase our fleet power as well. More weapons, right? Baltrus Glacius has eight population, soon to be nine. LK-12-728 is per partially hollow, not particularly hollow. Within its interior, species sprawls... Or within its interior, spaces sprawl, sprawls a dense honeycomb structure crafted of some unknown alloy housing containers of alien genetic material. By all appearances, this is an archive of life, the genetic record of some earlier civilization come and gone. Most of the DNA is hopelessly degraded, but there's still much to learn here. Fascinating. So there is a nice modifier for researching in that area. Also, it looks like we have a Tundra world out here, so we can start colonizing right away with this new arm of the galaxy we're gaining access to, which I really want to do. All right, so some Kingdom of Yonderim ships are exploring in this area, which is not good. I really want to lock down this space before they get any funny ideas. Trying to multitask as much as we can and get some, some new ships. This is the... We have some space in this here. All right, what do we have? Neutron torpedoes, nice. Energy credits plus 5% is probably the way I need to go next. Yes, point defense is nice. Yes, tachyon sensors are nice. Ugh. Yeah, actually, those might be the best way to go before the energy credit boost. Let's do that. And then society. Gaia creation. So this is our top tier terraforming technology. We can go ahead and go for that and start making Gaia planets. Leader lifespan plus 5 years. Leader recruitment, minus five. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of going for that next. Let's do it. It's 36 months away. Six months away from flak batteries. Oh, what do we have? Oh no, Dr. Jeeb died. He was a good researcher, man. He'd been with us for a while. So let's uh, visit. Who do we want? Do we want one of these guys, one of these guys, or one of these guys? Dr. Jeeb was one of these guys. Let's, let's, let's go with them. Can we recruit one of your scientists, please? Of course, you shall have your donation. So that's actually a good amount of energy. And now we are unfortunately going to be below our 3000 limit, which is going to, well, not really reduce our influence. Yeah, it didn't really change that much, actually. So maybe we don't need to worry as much about the 3,000, given the other ways that faction is pleased at the moment. That's good to know. That's really good to know, because that'll help us get more minerals sooner. All right, so now we have a new scientist. Let's go ahead and... What's his name? The Mentat. So he has better research speed. He's also... He's good to put on ships as well. On science ships. He's got bonuses that are helpful there. All right, so these cruisers are almost done. And then I need to build battleships. Which specific battleships do I need? We've got Augustus class, but not Julius class. All right, so yeah, let's go ahead and queue one up. It's expensive as hell, but let's do it. Again, our energy credits are gonna be going down too, which is frustrating. As soon as possible, I am going to attack the Enigmatic Fortress with the fleets that we have. I would like to have two 20k plus fleets, ideally. And really ideally, I would like some Corvettes. Leaders gained a level. Nice. Migration treaty proposal. Not to us, though. A small docking hatch leading to the interior of this asteroid is visible at the rim of a small crater on its surface. The hatch was likely concealed once, but it has since been exposed by micrometeorite impacts. 
look into that for me, please. That sounds interesting. And then I, can, I guess I can go ahead and go for another Julius class battleship here. This colony ship is going to head to start our new sector up here, which is couldn't come at a better time. We need to keep exploring down this direction because it looks like the kingdom of Yonderim is going to be thinking about maybe exploring here. The Tendrakian technocracy is declaring war against the Plismus Order. So these guys are at war. Again, they've been at war a couple of times, I think. All right, Flak Battery has been researched. Not really a tech we're going to use necessarily, but it, I'll look at it as we maybe start to get more uh, options. So these are physical torpedoes as opposed to energy torpedoes. Ship hull points plus 5%. Let's go for that. I want my ships to have a little bit more, uh, a little bit more grit in battle. All right, we've got that colony ship building up on Earth. Nice! We got some energy credits. That came at a good time. Now, notice our income is going down because we're building these ships. That's part of the issue of keeping the third strike force. That's You might remember I was kind of on the fence about that last episode. We, oh, interesting. So we've encountered some new aliens. This might... Oh, I'm not optimistic about this, actually. This could mean that we have aliens up here. Oh no! Holy crap! So which... All right, we have an awakened fallen empire, but it's nowhere near us. It might, this might be the ones that we've just encountered. Yeah, we have just encountered them. So these are watchful regulators. It began as a subtle shift in Zukakan behavior, scattered reports of their ships, once rarely seen outside their own space, now being spotted in remote systems. So since we got this at the same time as we met them, they've probably been awakened for a while already. Now being spotted in remote systems all across the galaxy, highly advanced scouting vessels visiting ancient ruined worlds, refusing all hails and fleeing when attacked. Their purpose and mission unknown until now. We now know that the Zukakan were preparing, recovering uh, the data banks of survey beacons and automated scouting posts left behind when they retreated to their present borders, gathering information for the return to the galactic stage. So where is this fallen empire, though? Oh, you're over here. Oh, okay. We now know, uh, or in Zukakin space, fleets are gathering, armies are being mustered, and ancient factories roar to life. For the first time in an age, the Zukakin enforcers are looking outwards beyond their borders and towards the gal galaxy at large. As their decaying shipyards are repaired and refitted, and the dormant so uh, systems of Titan foundries come online, the rest of the galaxy is left with only one question. Who will this once sleeping giant target first in their quest to reclaim age-old glory lost? Giants in the playground. All right. So this is a communication for the Roman Star Empire from the Zukakan enforcers. We have, we have decreed that it is the best interest of all species that we take a more active role in regulating the galactic dissemination of technology. We have submitted detailed protocols for the technological level that is appropriate for a less developed species such as yourselves. Any empire found to be in violation, God, you are ugly, of our regulations will be dealt with severely. Um, we will fight for our right to exist, Zukakan. I thought we changed our uh, first contact protocol to where we were nicer. I thought we did. Maybe I had talked about it, but didn't change it. Okay, we've got those battleships queued up. Oh, nice. Crystalline Entity Observation. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've entered into an area of space where there are going to be more Crystalline en Entities. So the Zukakans are all the way the hell over here. Alright, so this is the Crystal Sonar ability from Crystalline Entities. So now, anytime we encounter a system with Crystal Entities, we can use this ability and instantly see what's going on there. Oh, interesting. We have found the remaining drones drifting into orbit around the planet. We have learned that they are unwitting pawns in an elaborate scheme set up by an unknown faction. Going by the modus operandi of this operation, this faction is most likely a particularly old and particularly clever pirate syndicate. They must have found the drones drifting through space and done what we could not, modified them. While not as impressive as it sounds, all they did was introduce self-contained alien technology into the drones. Fact remains that these alien pirates possess a technological know-how far in advance of our own, at least in certain areas. Having installed their comms devices in the drones, the pirates let them drift through space again, knowing that they are set to assist their original master's colonists and that the drone's ability to accurately identify such colonists has degraded with age. The drones have essentially been fattening up our colony as, a, as the pirates watch, waiting for the ideal time to strike. Our military analysts predict that the pirates will strike within the next two years. All right, so we can gain influence by saying let them come. We can say we must not let, the, let this happen again and dismantle the drones and get a lot of engineering research, which will be good for that project. Or just kidding, it won't be good for it at all. <laughs> all right, so there is a fallen empire, or awakened fallen empire, but they're all the way over here. So I don't think they're going to be a problem, at least not for a while. All right, so we've got some ancient mining drones here. 
There's a lot of colonizable worlds out here. Atmospheric readings from Spica 2 do not match simulated projections. Check it out. Alpine world there. Colony ship is on its way. Meanwhile, can we build another battleship? Yes, we can. Let's go for a Julius class. 1490 is how much we need for each one. Classus Ravennus is rapidly gaining strength, and also our income is rapidly going away. Immense ragged plains of shadow drift across Spica 2's face. They are cast not by clouds, but by sheets of organic material drifting through the upper layers of the atmosphere, hinged, or rather jointed, to allow for a small degree of articulation. All right, so this is the shadow play modifier. Also, I think we should be able to... Okay, our 10th pop here is on his way. Let's go ahead and give him a mineral processing plant. System survey complete. So yeah, we have, right now, until we get something that's going to help us with our energy situation, hang on, let me have a look around here. These are all special buildings. Planetary Shield Generator, Ministry of Benevolence, Galactic Stock Exchange, Research Institute, Physics Lab, Auto Curating Vault, Mineral Processing Plant, Energy Nexus. Hmm. This is just a hydroponics farm. Is there anything else we need to build? Not really. So what we're going to have to do is, once we've got our fleets built up, we're going to have to basically be constantly transferring minerals in order to, or transferring minerals into energy in order to maintain our economy until things get better energy-wise. Advanced sensors that rely on rotating tachyon beams to detect ship movements even at extreme distances. New research, please. Nice. Dark matter. Let's definitely go for this. Also, Ascension Theory. Ascension Perks plus one, if we just do that research project. And a new research... Oh man, there's so many options! So many good options! I kind of want to go for this first. I feel like we should do this absolutely. It's 62 months away, which is only about five years, um, and get a new Ascension Perk much faster than we would otherwise, because we are currently still 32 months away from just another perk at all. Alright, so there are lots of colonizable planets in here. Our science ships have been busy. Oh, there's a Gaia world here. We need to colonize that, if we can. There's actually, it's it's protected though, so that's going to be a little bit tough. We need to send our fleets in to take care of that, which we can do. Classus Mizanensis is totally ready to take on Ruby Swarms. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get you up to here. You head that direction. Notice what happened as soon as we sent a fleet out from orbit. Good lord. Yeah, we have a lot more ships than we can afford right now. Yes, we have a lot of naval capacity, but as far as our energy output, one thing we can do to kind of make this a little bit better... Hang on, let's take a look at our sectors. Outliner's starting to get pretty long. Alright, we have a governor in all of our sectors, thankfully. Um... Let's see, Magna Grecia, we could increase taxes. There's actually an energy deficit in Illyria. So tell you what, you go ahead and I'm gonna have you focus on producing energy. Because you need to fix that deficit, and frankly, as much as I hate to take any of my sectors off of research focus, I think we're about to make up for that in other ways. Cisalpina. Oh, wow, that really made a big difference. Nice. If I did it in all of my sectors, I might actually be okay. This is going to slow down growth, unfortunately, because they're giving me more of their resources. But... Could be alright. Maybe there's another sector. Yeah, this, this one here. No, Aquitania. Let's go ahead and put them on energy focus as well. Because their, their energy output is a little bit anemic. So we're going to have them make a dedicated effort to... Alright, so that colony, that colony has started. Nice. Alright, defensive pact invitation. Uh, no. <laughs> System survey complete. Alright, I think we have enough for another battleship. Possibly... Not the last one. I think we need to build one more after this. Yeah, we do. And then I think we'll be ready to attack the Enigmatic Fortress. I don't think I'm going to wait for Corvettes. 
I just I feel like with our energy situation at the moment, it's just a little bit too dicey of a proposition. Okay, so we've encountered the not Fonken civilization out here. All this area looks ripe for colonization. And it makes me want to just explode out into that area. Yeah, we do wish to... So, this is what I was talking about. You do occasionally get notifications when these deals are about to go. We got them from both here, which is quite nice. Alpha Centauri 2A has been terraformed into a continental world. Perfect. That means one thing I definitely need to do right now, despite the fact that it will set us back in terms of... Um, yeah, this, this moon is now continental. So this, this did have a weak magnetic field, but it doesn't matter anymore. Let's go ahead and get humans from Barnard Continentum. And then it looks like that'll be the perfect spot to put it. So Alpha Centauri... This is Centauri 2. Or I, I could call it... Um, hmm... Let's just do Centauri 2. How about that? That's actually really good that we got that. That'll help with our energy situation. The asteroid recently suffered an impact from another body within the asteroid belt, which resulted in a slightly changed orbit and a massive crater on the surface. Look into that, please. Now, right now we have... Let me double check here again. The RSS Zephyr has picked up some curious findings from Minoc 3. There are significant pockets of radiation from the gas giant's atmosphere that appear to be the result of intense orbital bombardment. What someone could hope to gain by bombing a gas giant from orbit remains a mystery, however. We should investigate the signal. So isolate the signal. Pause, damn it. I don't know why it does this. It just randomly pauses and unpauses with different events. They're, they're not all consistent. They don't want to pause the game consistently. So I'll pause the game sometimes and unpause it others. It just goes back and forth. I've complained about it a lot, I know. System survey complete. All right, so we have seven battleships, two more building, and the ability to buy one more. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, Julius class battleship. Upon closer examination, we have discovered that a smaller asteroid consisting almost entirely of precious metals recently collided with LR-9138. This small but dense cache of minerals uh, was hidden just beneath the asteroid surface, but now that it has been discovered, it should be accessible to mining. A lucky find. All right, so our military ships, where are you? They are on the way. Actually, uh, those are ancient mining drones. Tell you what, let's have you take care of these real quick while you're in the neighborhood. Plus, this will be entertaining to watch. This is a fully built fleet in terms of its battleships, cruisers, and destroyers. Alright, they're preparing for the jump. They've already engaged and are already firing. Holy crap. Some long-range weaponry on these ships. There go the fighters. Look at all the fighters. Time project. Oh, debris. Yeah, of course. System survey complete. Construction complete. Situation log updated. So that was easy. Now, do I have a science ship up in the area? I bet I do. Yeah, you, come here. So go ahead and... We're going to put that at the front of the queue, and then we're going to put the research projects at the front of the queue. So it's one, two. Research projects will come first. And it looks like there was actually a project there, too. So we want to take this fleet now and bring them over to visit the Sky World. We also need to have a colony ship ready, though. Like, that that needs to happen. So let's go ahead and queue one up. The pirate fleet has arrived somewhat later than expected. Judging by the makeup of the fleet and formations used, they use, they have rallied their allies in an effort to pillage and burn Hojaka Montem as quickly, as quickly and decisively as possible. They will do no, no such thing. Okay, so hang on. Hojaka is here. Our fleet is currently here. So let's pay a visit to those guys. It's going to take a while for us to get there, but we'll be okay. All right, so that colony ship is setting up. We need to have, we need to get that guy a world before anyone else 
thinks of it. It's an Olimar. That'll also be a nice border world. It'll help us kind of hold off the... Is, it, is this Kingdom of Yandere from exploring any farther into our territory? Classes where Venice has eight battleships. We're waiting on two more. There are over 20k. We're ready. We are ready to attack the station. Oh, also, let's go ahead and start our new sector while I'm thinking about it. We're going to have this sector focused on energy as well. All right, the Quiet Dark is where we still have a, uh, <laughs> a Leviathan to defeat. So we'll have to keep an eye on them too. So this sector shall be named... Let's see, what have we got and what have we not? Thinking in terms of what the next... You know what? It's north of Narbonensis. We're not going to go with, um... We're not going to go with, uh... Geography again. We're, we're going to do something different. I'm not quite ready to go for Britannia. We're not that far away yet. But... Just to be... Just a little bit of a tribute to original Earth geography. This is going to be Magna Germania. We have a Magna Grecia, so why not go with Magna Germania as well? And then we need to assign a leader. Oh, good! Intellectual, perfect. We have a younger intellectual too, Aaron Little. <laughs> That's an interesting governor name. All right, so he's set up. Now, as much as I have put him in charge, I do actually want this sector to be focused on energy production. We're going to have them on finances as much as we can. And then we need to continue colonizing. Okay. That science ship is on its way down to that system to get that debris which hopefully will yield some good technology. This, this, uh, you're actually jumping pretty quickly. I like it. So they'll be there in just a second, actually, to fend off those pirates. And then we can rebuild those, uh, society research stations. Colonization in progress. Where? Oh, Alpha Centauri, I'm guessing. Yep, Centauri 2 colonization is underway. Fantastic. Didn't we already... Didn't we have the Dothnok chain already? This has been happening since 1.5. There are sometimes duplicate messages. Um, sorry to be too much of a hassle. We've, we've, already, we've already done this. Research complete. Research complete. What do we have? Oh, nice. Ship hull points plus 5%. That came at a good time. Armor plus 5%. Hey, immediate follow-up. I can get better armor for all my ships. Hell yeah, let's do it. 37 months away. We're 14 months away from Gaia creation. 50 months away from another Ascension perk, which I love. System set. All right, so it looks like some of my ships are in need of some upgrades. Not all, but some. Let's get our science ships to upgrade, too. I want to keep them in tip-top shape. Except for the one that was going to... Did I just... I think I just changed the orders of the one. Yeah, I did. All right, you actually... Let's have you... Do the same thing. All right, good. Now all that order is ready. So they're still going to upgrade, but I, I moved stuff to the front of the queue that makes a little bit more sense for them. There are a lot of colonizable worlds out here. Nice. A number of individuals belonging to the pre-sentient native population uh, of Avalon Ignis somehow got into a secure compound on the outskirts of our colony. They were chased off within hours, but not before severely damaging several interstellar uplinks dedicated to currency transfers. We fear several hundred credits may have been lost in the ether. Energy credits minus 300. That sucks. That really came at a bad time, actually. And it seems like Classus Missinensis has engaged our attacking friends. So this is going to be over pretty quickly. I would imagine. Yep, their ships are already dying. And then we can finally take on those that Ruby Swarm as well. We also should have a colony ship waiting. Is it still building? I suppose it is. Yeah, still building. Almost done. Alright, so that's that. I want you to take care of that too. Or actually, no. One of our science ships that's currently... Let's just stop your order. Let's have you just upgrade and then you come there and take care of that. Alright, Classus Missinensis, you need to head back over here to Olimar. 
or rather I'll send you to Ziff, and then we're going to have a new colony ship very soon to colonize that world. Now we have plenty of influence. We should be ready to colonize it despite its distance from everything. Seems like there are definitely other worlds nearby, including a continental world that we can colonize to expand and have a better sector out there, and a tropical world too. So it's actually a really nice area of space, and I'm glad we're going to beat them to it, starting with that Gaia world. Colony ship, the RSX, RSS Expansion 2. Yes, absolutely. That is precisely what we're going to do. All right, so Classis Missinensis is headed that way. Classis Ravenis is finishing their last two battleships. Ships upgraded. It's taken long enough but we are going to be ready to take that fortress soon. And then we can start building habitats as well. And we're going to need them because we have an energy deficit and we need to have a habitat that's dedicated to energy production. We can kind of fix the problem a little bit by... We still just have nine pop here. We can kind of fix the problem a little bit by building up our new core world here. And of course, we're going to have Mars terraformed in another couple of episodes, I would imagine. I would imagine it's about a third of the way done at this point. Let's take a quick look. Oh, it's almost halfway, actually. 4,110 days. So still a little bit over 10 years, but it's it's on its way. Okay. I noticed this. I, I need to make sure Paradox is aware of this. I turned this off. Remember in episode one, I said, we're not going to do horizon signal and it's turned off. I was playing a, a solo campaign around the time I started this series just because I was still playing around with utopia and horizon signal came on when I knew it was turned off. So this is, I'm going to ignore this. Um, I'm, I don't want to do the horizon signal chain. I did it in song of the stars and I don't want to do it this time. Um, it's long, it's complicated. It has big ramifications. Situation I'd prefer not to. Completed. We're just going to leave it alone. We are going to leave it alone. That's very, very frustrating because I turned that off for the express purpose of avoiding it here. All right, we've almost got another pop here. And as soon as we do, we can upgrade to a higher level capital center on that world, which is quite nice. Oh, and look at us. We're actually 27 minutes into this episode. So let's see, how's Miss Anensis doing? They're almost to the Olimar system. There's a pattern of unusual sonic activity on Karazit 1A. Look into it then. All right, well, tell you what, we are 27 minutes in. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one here. In the next one, we are going to, well, no, hang on. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's let's go ahead, since we have our, our colony ship on the way, and it's fairly close. Yeah, it's already heading that direction. That was a long jump lane. Let's go ahead and attack these guys and get this colony started before the end of the episode. Let's do that. And that way we can turn our full focus towards bringing Classis Missinensis back and getting ready to attack the Enigmatic Fortress, which hopefully we can knock out all in one episode, but we'll see how it goes. I've never actually attacked the fortress before. I've attacked plenty of Leviathans, as I've discussed in the comments, but never actually hit the fortress. Right, so the colony ship is getting close. There are structures on Karazit 1A, though most are less than ruins and more akin to rubble. The RSS Zephyr's initial pass over the planet reveals only one building that can be considered intact, seemingly spared whatever calamity robbed Karazid 1A of its buildings and builders alike. This is the source of the noise. So it's an alien toy factory. Not only is the building intact, reports Science Officer Dmitry Pushkov, but it is active. It is a production facility of some sort, turning plasticine polymers into mute objects of uncertain but possibly ornamental purpose. The raw materials and end product are largely uninteresting to the Roman Star Empire, but we could doubtlessly stand to learn something from the automated man manufacturing process itself. And this is, again, on Karazit 1A. It's an arid world. So eventually we'll have that colonized. Got some sapphire lurkers up here in our savannah world. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and jump in and take care of these guys. All right, so it looks like the largest group is there. We're going to jump in and hit them right away. And then I want to go ahead and see if we can make our way around the outside of the system, attack those guys. And then we'll see where the chips fall. All right, so the jump is underway. We've got it on speed two. I'll take it to speed one as soon as we jump. Speed one. All right, so this is going to be over pretty quick. We're at close range. Yeah, they're, they're getting nuked. Oh, man. Our ships are holding their own quite handily. Right, again, you just want to watch these numbers, 10, 20, and 40. Amazing. All right, so that's been taken care of. Oh, we also... Holy crap, forgot about this. We're going to need to survey that. All right, the RSS Wayfarer. We need to get you over here to survey the planet before we can colonize it. 
So we keep an eye on them. All right, so we are now moving to that side of the... Oh, what do we have? Admiral Pierce Baines has died. Oh, we lost our Admiral for Classes for Venice. Well, let's recruit a new one. Monthly hull regeneration, plus two. Ship hull points, plus 10%. That actually sounds like the best one. Also, cautious weapons range, plus 10%. Let's do that, because we're going to be attacking that fortress pretty soon, and extra range is probably a good idea. We are once again in an energy deficit situation, which sucks, despite everything we've done. Centauri 2. Now, part of the energy deficit situation is the fact that we have a colony uh, ship on the way out, so that's, that's part of the problem, but... All right, now we could do a frontier clinic here, and that would improve growth time. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that, because we need this place to grow quickly. Basic hydroponics farm, absolutely. So this is actually not the biggest planet, unfortunately, but it will still help to have this built up. Yeah, and this colony ship, as long as it exists, will be... It's, it's a high maintenance cost on this thing. I'm regretting saying that I want to get this colonization started before. <laughs> Alright, so now that I know they're not moving toward me, I'm going to kind of zigzag like so. Incoming Meanwhile, we've got a trade deal offer. Minerals for terraforming liquids. You're going to give me that many minerals? Sure. You know what I'm going to do with that right away? Actually, hang on. We need to get this back. But well, we can't right now because we don't have enough money. So once again, that expired with no notification whatsoever. Let's go ahead and trade with this new faction that we've encountered. We need to trade for energy credits. All right, now we have a little bit more energy to deal with. Because we don't have a huge deficit at the moment, and I think we're going to climb back out of it, especially once we have this ship back in orbit of a uh, of a planet, which we'll do next episode. But I want to finish this combat and maybe get the, the, uh, the colonization of Olimar 1 underway. What do we have? Gaia creation? <laughs> nice coincidence there. Food plus 5%. Let's actually go for the hydroponics farm research next. We've been sitting on that for a while. Now it's going to be a while before we get any more techs. Unity-wise, we are two months away from a new policy, so that's going to happen this episode. So we can start a new tree. What do we have? Trade deal. Teldar crystals, and you're going to give me more minerals? For Teldar crystals? Sure. All right, well, once again, let's pay a visit to the Rig and Commerce Exchange. And we want energy credits, and... Um, Strategic resources. We want to buy your spice. So this is going to cost a little bit of energy, but we get the rig and spice, which provides extra happiness. And that's done. All right, so this is one of the larger groups. We're still at 10, 20, and 40. Totally destroying them. So far surviving. Might be losing fighters, but nothing else really. I'm really hoping we don't lose any ships in this. That would be fantastic. All right, now the Wayfarer is still on the way in. The Wayfarer is going to come here. Tell you what, let's put you on... No, let's not put you on a different mode. All right, so we're engaging this group, and then the last group is Paltry. They're not going to last. Nice, new tradition. Let's do this really quick. All right, so now we have to pick another new tree. We can go for Harmony, uh, which increases the happiness of all pops. Um, we could increase our leader lifespan... Negative impact of governing ethics attraction caused by distance from capital is reduced by 50%. Ship build speed is increased by 33% in defensive wars. Unrest is reduced by 20. And this unlocks the Paradise Dome, which is another unity building. So this might be the best way to go. Let's see. Also, we can unlock diplomacy and then one particular... Also, if we unlock harmony, what do we get? Yeah, happiness. If we unlock diplomacy, we would do better diplomatically. And then our next... Uh, tradition could be a habitability boost to all worlds, which is really, really nice. And the visitor center as well. And then, of course, there's supremacy. Border range increased by 20% just for adopting it. I kind of want to go for harmony, given how things have been going so far. I feel like this is going to be the best way to go about this. Let's... And then the final bonus is it reduces the mineral cost of consumer goods by 15% and we unlock an Ascension Perk slot versus Diplomacy, which increases our trust cap, Supremacy, increases our fire rate by 15%. The border range plus 20% is so tempting too, though, because that could help us in a number of ways. 
I just, we're building such a large, wide empire that I want to have these benefits. I want to reduce unrest. I want to have the ability to hold it down. Yeah, I'm going to go for harmony because I just want to make sure we maintain stability and don't have any kind of re rebellion issues. We do already have a risen empire, an awakened empire that started. So just want to play it safe a little bit, not get too optimistic. All right, so the Wayfarer is ready to jump in. We need to eliminate these guys and then they should be safe to come in. System survey complete. All right, so here's what we're going to do. These guys are going to die. Situation log All right, I'm going to give these orders, but then we're going to cut the episode. So now that we can safely come in here, let's go ahead and survey that Gaia world first and foremost. And then you jump out here, and I want you to do all of the research projects, followed by surveying the system. And then you can auto-explore to your heart's content. Classes Missinensis. All right, also the RSS expansion needs to be in orbit of that world. It's only 145 influence to colonize it, so that's quite nice. And then the class, Classus Missinensis needs to head back to, where were you? Baltrus Continentum? Alright, so they're going to come back there and repair up. I can't actually tell them to repair there because they do it automatically. But anyway, let's go ahead and let some time pass just for a second so that we can get this done. Where's the Wayfarer? So both of them have just jumped in. Well, the colony ship has. The Wayfarer is right behind them. So they're going to scout out that planet. They're actually moving faster than the colony ship, which is nice. Look at this teamwork. Look at this. This is working well. Okay. All right, so this colony ship is now ready to start that colony. Oh man, new Gaia world. This is awesome. I think that looks like the best spot to land on. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and land it. This is Olimar. And then the Gaia world is going to be... We, we called the original one Terra Nova, but this is a little bit different. So if we have a Gaia planet, let's, let's, let's call it Olimar Terra. That's, that's per the list that we've been using for the entire series. And on that note, let's see what our construction ships are up to. They're not really doing much. I bet you, hang on, where are all of you? Yeah, you're in, I've got a couple in Dargan. And then we have this one in Calm. Now there are some research stations that could be built there, but it looks like maybe someone's already on top of those. Oh no, that's not quite in our territory yet, that's why. So this one in Dargan, let's go ahead and, before the episode is over, I wanna go ahead and queue these projects up. So we don't have to worry about it next episode and we're getting these benefits as soon as possible. Notice we have an energy surplus again which is quite nice. And that's not even with our fleet in orbit of a planet. I don't think, anyway. And we can finally put an observation station around Chiblar, which is also nice. And on that note, we are 38 minutes into this episode. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one here, and in the next one, we are going to attack the Enigmatic Fortress. It's going to happen. It's finally going to happen. We have the fleet power to do it. We are going to have close to 25 or 50k fleet power altogether, especially when we send in the third strike force. So I'm going to go ahead and move some of these fleets to a little bit closer to get them ready. And then, yeah, it's finally going to happen. Hopefully we'll be able to knock it out in one episode. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes, as always, coming out are coming out every day at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.